guys, this is Colin Moshman for TournamentPokerEdge.com, and today we have an awesome final table replay with all ho cards revealed, the first WCOOP event, an $11 two-day that crushed the $100,000 guarantee with over $17,000 for first. We're going to analyze exactly how this one goes down and what the optimal lines are in a ton of different spots. Very first hand, we've got some action, so I like the Jack-10 suited open. And Ace-King suited flats, and the reason why I like this flat is because he's too deep with 35 blinds to incorporate his shoving range, and being so mid-stacked, he's not even looking to induce with a hand as strong as Ace-King suited. He could also set up a squeeze here by flatting, so this is a nice play. And we expect that the big blind's going to defend. This is a really tight fold with a 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. Looks like Jack-10 suited is going to slow play. And Ace-King could definitely make an equity denial bet and also a smallish size to set himself up for potentially seeing all five cards for free. But I don't mind checking back here with plenty of showdown value and looking to keep the pot small. At the turn, jack suited has to bat for a coronated bird. And Ace-King suited is correct to just call here. He's going to take this line for some pot control and also to keep UTG's range wide. So at the river, this should certainly go bet and call, and UTG wants to size up here. A. Barman has a lot of strong hands in his range, uh, including a number of ace-queen combos, king-queen suited, uh, the ace-king that he actually has. So this bet of about two-thirds of pot is nice. That's the minimum I would go. And Barman, though, does lose the minimum, I think, by just flatting pre, and then by checking back flop and calling down turn and river. So the hijack is definitely going to open shove in this hand, at least he certainly should, as the shirt stack here with any suited Broadway hand. And pocket eights in the small blind, if I were him, I would just flat his entire range because of how deep he is effective with the player in the big blind. So from pocket pairs, I would flat here, only down to about pocket fives. From a chippy V perspective, if we ignore the player in the big blind, and just assume he's going to get a heads up against the shover, he could go quite a bit wider than that. Um, I mean, for example, certainly fours would be profitable, but considering that he's relatively deep against the big blind and out of position, so that it's going to be really bad for him when the big blind does enter the pot, I would only go down to pocket fives there if I were him. Small blind could absolutely put in a light three bet there with his ace nine offsuit. He could potentially jam at 25 blinds, but I don't mind 3-bit folding too much. There is a good chance that J. Rose is going to fold a lot of his open raising range, considering that the player who's now in the hijack, Nelson, has well under 10 blinds. So one thing that's really important is stack distribution. In this tournament has a stack distribution I love, which is a ton of different stacks. Big blind of this hand with about 100 blinds, hijack of this hand with under 10 blinds. And so this is gonna make for radically different optimal strategies for the different players. And here I was just about to say that Button has to play this hand. Now, generally speaking, it's not gonna be a mistake to play 10-9 suited, but here it would be a very big mistake to fold considering that he has position against another mid stack. So flatting is nice. This will definitely be profitable relative to folding. My preference, though, would have been for him to 3-bet and take the aggressive action in this hand, put Giorcani on the defensive. As played, if I were Giorcani, would check this flop. He's got a reasonable showdown value hand with second pair and five outs to two pair of trips, a backdoor wheel draw, so I like this check a lot. And the button has a clear bet with 10-9 suited. He's got no showdown value, but also two backdoor draws to potentially fall back on. So this is a clear bet in his power, which he makes, and Gier Candy correctly calls. Now the button is correct, going to be right to barrel a lot of turns and rivers. That's so absolutely, for example, if he picks up any kind of draw, any overcard, most turns he's going to look to barrel. But this jack, I like his check back. It doesn't change the bird texture at all. So a nice check back on his part. At the river, cutoff is most likely going to check call. And Button has a clear value bet with his rivered second pair kind of hand. Technically two pair, but I kind of think of these more as second pair. And if I were him, I'd bet on the big side. He's kind of polarized to like a nine or nothing. It's not necessarily that extreme, but there's not much else in his range. 
And so he may make Jir Kenny even more curious with a larger size. I think it would be a big mistake for Jir Kenny to fold, getting better than 4-1. to one. If he's good 20% of the time, he's going to show a nice profit. It's very exploitable to fold. So he is correct to make this call. But I would like to see Hig Hog bet even larger. And I think that he's going to get called pretty much as often and just win more those times he does. So I think he can increase the EV of his bet by going with a bigger sizing. Be interesting to see if the cutoff does make a pretty big exploit to fold here. I don't think he will. And I do like how Ace-5 plays that hand a lot. Only difference is, like I said, I like to see Hig Hog 3-bet pre with the 10-9 suited and as played, bet larger at the river. Now, Ape Armin is almost certainly going to fold, and when he does, Knowledge absolutely has to play this hand. You may think open limp, right? 40 blinds, this is sort of the modern play to make. I would actually like to see him put this hand in his raising range to apply ICM pressure against the mid stack. I would open 3x here and come in with a raise to 3.6 million, and he does raise. This is, you know, I guess this is uh, him hitting the pot button. And I like this. I think we might go a little bit smaller sizing-wise than an almost 4x raise. But I like a lot the fact that he raised there. And his plan should be to barrel a ton of the time when he gets called to apply max ICM pressure. All right, so J. Rose picks up Pocket Rockets. Picks up a real hand. A lot of the time, King Jack suited is going to be a great 3-bit shove hand. But considering that the Razor is UTG plus 1... And with his 13 or so blinds, Barmet is kind of mid-stacked with a couple other players with similar stacks and Nelson being so short. I actually like his decision to fold. So here, Knowledge, the big stack, is almost certainly going to open his ace-five suited. Don't think he's been super active so far. Normally, Neole would want to jam 15 blinds with King-Jack offsuit. But with there being a much shorter stack, if he doesn't think knowledge is super loose or, you know, opening up a lot, he might fold. So this is kind of close. It looks like, though, it's Kix who's going into the tank. Now, he does not want to flat his queen 10 offsuit. This hand is not strong enough to flat. So most of the time, we expect him to fold. But what he could do is put this hand in his late three bidding range. Offsuit Broadway hands tend to be pretty good for that. They've got some blockers. They play okay, have called. And so this is a pretty sweet three bid. Um, stacks look like he might be disinclined to lay three, but he might get more credit for that. And now this all comes down to how knowledge perceives kicks. So the pot's large enough, 14 million, that he could four bet shove. This is a nice semi bluff four bet shove hand with a suited ace. And if he thinks his opponent is going to be light three betting him some, and maybe he's also opening very wide in the cutoff, so his suited ace is high enough up in his range that this would be a pretty reasonable four bet shove. But generally speaking, against an over 3x 3-bet, I would be 4-bet shoving or folding out of position. So at the flop, Knowledge correctly checks his entire range, we assume, over to Kix. Surprise, Kix doesn't bet. It's a very dry flop. He doesn't have a ton of showdown value. I would see a little bit more checking a hand, like let's say King-Queen of Diamonds, but Queen-10 off. I'm kind of surprised he's just checking this down and giving it up. It's a very dry flop. And as played, if Knowledge is going to check turn, he has to value bet now. And if I were him, I would again, I would bet big here. I would bet like two-thirds pot. Because what he's targeting is a hand like pocket kings or pocket queens that would three bet pre being willing to stack off. And now is pot controlling up until this point. So that would be the hand I would most likely put him on based on all streets. I like Knowledge's sizing there a lot. And I think Kix makes a very reasonable three-bit preflop. I'm just a little bit confused why he's not going to stab on either flop or turn. Interesting open. King 7 Suda would normally be pretty light from MP1, but he is the second chip leader. So fine to open up a little bit. Going to be a clear shove with definitely sevens plus. From a chip EV perspective, Neo like could go wider than that. But even with Nelson being so short, I think 7s plus against almost any opponent is going to be a jam there. Gio Candy can go either way with his 10-9 suited. If he does fold, Barmet's going to have an open shove. Even though Nelson's so short, so he folds, 
But if you look at these hands in software, you obviously have to be much tighter calling it off, but you can still open shove fairly wide when you have fold equity. So I'm pretty confident that is going to be a Nash open shove. Now it gets to Neolay, who's certainly gonna play as ace nine. Jamming will beat folding. He definitely has a profitable shove, but he goes with the min raise instead. And if he doesn't think Jay Rose is gonna exploit him with a lot of small three bets, or a lot of three bet shoves that is, then this is a reasonable play. Obviously he's now committed flopping second pair. And I think Nelson's plan with the ace five was to stop and go a lot of flops. I'll probably check if he actually hits top pair or something decent. And when he misses a coordinated flop, he just check folds. A little bit marginal based on how sure he is, but I think that's not too crazy. So this could spell trouble for knowledge. Here, Neolay definitely should not shove the pocket threes. He's very mid-stacked, and based on positions, he makes a good fold. Ace-King, of course, should still shove. And the interesting thing is that this is going to be a very close spot for knowledge, or at least it should be. Normally against a sub-15 blind 3-bet shove, you can usually snap off ace-queen. But what is this jamming range here with Nelson being so short? I mean, I expect that it might be something like pocket eights, ace-queen, ace-10 suited, something like that. So knowledge there was getting about 3-2. to two. He wants at least 40% equity. And I think it's real close as to whether or not he had it there. Um, my guess is if we put that hand in software like Equilab, it's going to be fairly break even. From UTG plus one, he's certainly going to want to open Ace 10 off and continue to apply pressure even after losing that 3070. And Hig Hog with the high pocket pair in the big blind. Some chance he just flats this. You know, he's probably not going to want a three bed light here out of position with these stacks. So he could even flat most or all of his range. Um, my guess, though, is he's going to put in a 3-bet here. Uh, out of position with stacks fairly deep, he should go at least 4x if he is going to 3-bet. And I'd be pretty surprised if knowledge continued on. So 11 million is nice sizing. Uh, this is a poor hand to play on in that it's not doesn't play super well post-flop. So even getting good odds, I would just fold this. I assume he's just posing here, but we'll see. Going into the tank using that time bank. Oh, and he puts in the light 4-bet, less than a 2x 4-bet. Now, I'm going to tell you guys why I don't really like this play. This is great to apply ICM pressure with Nelson so short, but the problem is that Hig Hog is just not going to be putting in enough light 3-bets. This is a terrible spot for him to 3-bet because of the fact that he's out of position against the one player who can bust him with there being a sub five line stack. So even though stacks look really good for ICM pressure without a read, I just don't think that Hig Hog is gonna be three betting him enough such that knowledge will show a profit on this light four bet. Oh, and look at this, a turn full house. And a stack to pot ratio of under 1.5. I'm guessing he's going to bet out here. This is nice sizing. He's setting himself up for the river shove. And knowledge, meanwhile, thinking that he might be able to take this pot away on the river. Or he might spike his gut shot, which we know would be the worst thing for him. Haycock almost certainly going to jam here, uh, which will win this pot. But the one clear mistake we've seen, I think, is if Knowledge does not have a read on Hig Hog, he shouldn't put in that 4-bet because you might think again, hey, you know what, my opponent has to be so tight playing a large pot here. But if he's going to be super tight 3-betting, you still don't have enough fold equity on the 4-bet. And I think the average player you're going to come across here just is not 3-betting often enough. Having lost two hands straight and a big part of his stack, Knowledge probably wants to click the fold button, but he has a mandatory open here. I do expect that, unless he's really feeling the need for some time off, he's just gonna put in the small open. Once again, he gets jammed on, and this is an over 20 blind shove. If I were him, I would definitely fold the pocket sevens. We expect that Neolay is going to be very tight jamming, kind of similar to the ace-king versus ace-queen hand. Nelson just being four blinds is going to make him a lot tighter. 
So knowledge is certainly correct to fold here. And I don't love this call by Nelson. Yes, he's probably going to get it all in against one opponent with a lot of overlay. But he's getting it in against an opponent who's on a very tight range. And I think his equity is too low there. With King-5 suited, I would like that play. But I think even with all the overlay, there was a slightly spewy time for him to put in his last four and a half lines with the King-5 off. So this is kind of similar to the last spot when Higong at 10-9 suited. If the cutoff opens, which he does, I would once again like to see Hagog put in the three bet. There's something wrong with flatting per se, but three betting is making your opponent's life more difficult. It's giving you some preflop fold equity, more ways to win this pot. So I think this is a really nice play. And I'd be very surprised here if Cheer can't eat anything besides fold. Of course, I was very surprised in one or two previous hands, so maybe that's not saying too much. Maybe we'll see the light for a bet, but my guess is a fold and that's what happens there. So everyone's gonna be very happy that Nelson's eliminated besides perhaps the big stacks. And look at the setup. So Jir Kenny will obviously open, and when he does, Hickhog is just gonna flat, I think. He's getting the implied odds to flat and just kind of be a nuisance in position. Uh, low pocket pairs don't make good three bet hands. So my suspicion here is that he'll flat. Knowledge is then gonna put in the three bet. I would like to see a pretty large size out of him. Maybe something like, probably five X from the small blind. So something like 12.5. I believe fives are then gonna fold. And Gier Canny with either a shove or a call Say like kicks though isn't totally sure. One thing he definitely does not want to do is call if he thinks that knowledge has been a lot of hands. He's not giving anyone too much credit. He could jam here. Uh, this is a shiver fold spot. I, I think we are going to see him fold. But the one clear mistake you would make would be to flat this. I guess four bet fold would also be kind of crazy at the stack depth. Seems to be considering it. So he'd be giving Knowledge about two to one, but if Knowledge is just squeezing and Knowledge is doing this light, he's not gonna call it off. So I wouldn't normally make this play with Barmet only having 10 blinds, but you know, if he thinks that the Knowledge is pretty loose, he's got some fold equity, and now he's gonna flip with a lot of overlay, then this is a courageous play. It's gonna work out for him. Not much working out for Knowledge. So again, my verdict is that generally that's gonna be a little bit too light, but particularly against a lag small blind who's very active, very capable of squeezing, it is a nice line there despite the ICM pressures. So what will we see happen here? First, if it folds to Barma, he has a mandatory open shove with queen 10 off. Haycock can go either way, he opens which is fine, folding would have been fine. And very unlikely any either player in the blinds is going to contest that open. Here we have another one where if everyone folds to Barmet, sub 10 blinds in the hijack, he's the shirt stack, that he would have a mandatory open shove. Cheer Candy can go either way, kind of mid stack from MP1. I think he'll have a profitable open, but I don't hate that fold. Barmet, though, has a clear open shove. He folded the Queen Jack suited earlier. But he does sham this queen jack offsuit, which is a nice shove. And he should put it in there with any Broadway hand as the shirt stack. And now once again here, he's going to jam the pocket sevens. If I were Neo LA, I would definitely fold pocket fives here. Considering ICM, considering Barman has not been too active. I wouldn't put him on a much wider range considering he just shoved. A lot of the time it is actually going to be a real hand. All right, so Knowledge is not really the best. He picks up aces. He's probably wondering what's gonna happen here. But the player who should give him action now is the big blind. I think Gier Candy folded 10-9 off in the very first hand of this final table, getting great odds. He is though correct to defend you with the 10-8 offsuit, which he does. And this is, should be an action flop. This is a dangerous flop for aces with deeper stacks. With a stack to pot ratio of under four, if I were knowledge, I would simply bet and get it in against a check raise. 
a little bit surprising he checks back. From Jeter Kenny's perspective now, he is a combination of marginal made hand and decent draw with his open hand straight draw. I like his check. He should be planning to check call here. And Nala should be making a significant mistake if he did not bet now. So he should put in a bet, uh, let's say 4.7. He will still have to stack off facing check raise. But again, Jeter Kenny should just check call here. And another mandatory value bet for knowledge on the river. Jeter Kenny has some Queen X hands in his range, uh, some lower pairs, some River King X hands like King 10. So I'd like to see a bet here of something like 10 million, maybe looking like he's just barreling a scare card. goes in the tank. When he does bet, I think that, oh, he checks back. This is a really tight check back with the pocket aces. I think there are a lot of worse hands that can call. And also his opponent doesn't look very strong after he checks both flop and turn and doesn't put in the turn check raise, checks river again. So I think that was overall a much too cautious line. And I would have liked to see him just bet the flop as the biggest point. Jeter Kenny should just give up this hand from the small blind, considering that the big blind is the chip leader and he's very mid-stack. So I like that open fold from the small blind. Knowledge has the curse that every single hand he's basically dealt something and put in some kind of weird situation. I'm not saying he's always played them right, uh, but that's basically what's going on with him. I like the flat with ace-jack suited. Jamming would be okay, but considering his opponent open from UTG and there's a much shorter stack, flatting this playable hand looks good. And Knowledge checks, which is interesting. I think Hack is going to check back. We would expect Knowledge to see but a big part of his range. And probably not too much of his range is just going to check full. A lot of the time, this is going to be some kind of pot control with pocket queens. Maybe he has ace-queen suited with a backdoor flush draw. The slow play like he actually has. And knowledge just calls. I like this play. He will have to stack off. So some pot control, some looking to induce bluffs. I don't think that 100 HG is going to barrel this turn. Doesn't change the board texture very much. And he also doesn't want to get check raised off of his gut shot. And three outs to top pair. Here knowledge has to value bet. And I think he's playing an overly pot control kind of game, which is a uh, risk when you're mid-stacked. You know, you don't want to spew it off. You don't want to commit ICM aside, but it is possible to go too much into pot control mold. I think particularly with the pocket aces, but there as well, it looks like that's what's occurring. So Kenny's going to open Jir Kenny, the ace queen. I don't know why now some kind of affectionate nickname for him and I'm calling him Kenny. And if I were Haycock, I'd once again play this ace nine off. And once again, with a three bet, this hand does not play very well. Just three bet the blocker. If he does that, Jeter Kenny should jam over him with the ace queen. But that would be my preference to three bet to apply ICM pressure, even though he's already contested a lot of Jeter Kenny's opens. And that's what he does. So Haycock playing very well so far. Pot 16 million. Jir Kenny would be risking under three times that. So out of position, I would just jam this hand. He knows Higog is active. Higog is very capable. He has a lot of fold equity. So even though it would suck to bust with the shorter stacks, I think he just has to take a stand here with the ace queen and put in the four bed shove out of position. Nice play. And Higog's credit, he really doesn't even pose there. So definitely a big win from him, not just that one pot, but sort of him saying, you know what, I'm not just going to lay down and take it every time. So he's probably feeling pretty good right now. And as a result, he decides to open the 6-5 suited. Kicks, I think, is usually going to flat. He doesn't really want to get 4-bet or play a big pot out of position. So I think he's going to be a little more polarized with his 3-betting. I wouldn't hate 3-betting, but I do like this flat here. From Jeter Kenny's perspective, I would see bet this flop largely for value 
and equity denial. He doesn't really want to give a free card. I think the sizing is a little bit too small. And one effect it's going to have is it should keep kicks in. Possibly he's going to fold ace jack offsuit even when, um, you know, given that he's got no backdoor draw to a larger bet. But against that minuscule bet, he has to at least continue on one more street. So Jir Canny, the plan I like to see from him is to bet again at the turn with the plan of checking back any river unimproved instead of giving his opponent a free card. And I think here he's just going to take his showdown value. Both players are going to look to show this hand down. Bluffing is probably going to be inefficient. He has third pair, so if he bets, uh, that would be a bluff. He couldn't really target worse hands there. And I don't think that... Too many better hands are going to fold, possibly a better 5x hand, but for the most part, not too much good is going to come of that play. Hey Kong with a legit hand, and Neo Lay with one of these situations where normally you want to defend, getting great odds with the low offsuit ace. Oh, he spikes bottom trips. There, I don't think it would have been crazy for ICM reasons to just kind of make a nitty fold in the big blind, uh, but he's flopped it. So Haycock should be c betting small with most of his opening range. And we expect to see Neil a slow play given that he also has a pretty relevant card in the Ace of Diamonds. And said he goes for the immediate check raise. A little bit surprising. Haycock correctly calls knowing that a lot of the time when your opponent check raises a dry flop, it's going to be with air. And it'd be very exploitable to bet fold a hand as strong as pocket nines on a 3-10-3 flop. So what's he going to do here? Is he going to get away? A lot of the time, you just have to click the call button here. Actually, I actually think this is a great fold he makes because Neole is putting in a huge part of his stack. And considering that Barmit is so short, unless you know that your opponent is very capable of making plays like that as a mid-stack, a lot of the time, there's going to be two weighted to value hands and you can make some pretty big exploitive folds. So I think Haycog makes a very nice folder with his pocket nines. So we're going to end here in part one and in part two pick up with more of the early and mid game before finishing with end game and shorthanded heads up play in part three. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This has been Colin Moshman for TournamentPokerEdge.com.